Hi guys, Adam here. This is the first in a series of videos where we're going to create a fitness testing database together and then visualize that information. So let's go over this data set really quickly. And your information may differ drastically from what's in here, but hopefully you're able to transpose or infer what's going on and use it in your, in your data set as well. So we have players. And each player performed tests on a date, and they have a participation status for that date. They could be full, limited, or out. And then there's an event type. And this is a personal decision that I'll talk about later, but players come in. The theory is that players come in and they have a training camp. And then there's other information that's collected during the season. The reason why we have an event type field here is because you may want to segregate training camps from in-season testing because the conditions are different. In-season, they're playing in games. Training camp, they're coming off of a summer of conditioning, hopefully. Then we have a player's position and a group, which you can think of as, a, as their team, or, or maybe just a, another way to group the, the person if you want. And we'll use this information to segregate the information out if we want to. Then we get into some anthropometric characteristics, which include body weight, height, skin fold readings, and from those we can calculate a body fat percentage. And as we move along here, we get into some power stuff, where we have counter movement jumps, and in this instance, there are three trials that they perform. We can calculate their best or their average or both. And then we perform broad jumps. After that, there's Wingate peak power, and there's also Wingate mean power, but that's in a different category. So this is power related information. And then we have pull ups. TBDL 1RM, which is trap bar deadlift, one rep max. And this may be an estimation from a 3RM or a 5RM that you perform. Then we have the mean velocity of that lift. This is the strength area. And then we perform an isometric leg press uh, on a leg press machine, which essentially the weight stack is um, fully, it, it's full. So the weight stack will not move. And there's a force plate on the isometric leg press machine. and the numbers that you see here are the peak force readings from that machine for the left and right legs. And we can calculate some things off of that. Then we get into, into some speed work where we do a 10 meter sprint and a 20 meter sprint off the ice. Um, this is a cohort of ice hockey players, or it could be anyone, but we have sports specific testing uh, later. Then we collect VO2 max, which is on a bike in this case. We get into the uh, Wingate mean power that we talked about before which is kind of in the conditioning area with VO2 max. Then we get into some mobility information, which is Y balance in this case. And we can calculate some things off of that. And then we get into some sports specific testing where they perform a, a 30 meter sprint on the ice. And there are times for six meters, 15 meters and 30 meters um, over that sprint. And then we have an on ice conditioning test where essentially they perform six six bouts of, of a test that takes between 20 and looks like 25 seconds to complete and they do that repetitively with a set amount of rest uh, to infer their their conditioning level on the ice and calculate some things off of that now we don't have positions or groups or any of these and some things calculations filled in and that's intentional we do collect the position and group information in the player's profile so in the player's profile, we have their, their gender, their date of birth, position, and group. And we can add these things if we feel it's appropriate um, to this to our data set. And the reason why we would is because we want to we want to classify things or we want to segregate information by a position or a group that they're in. In this case, we have males and females, and we have forwards and defensemen and goalies. And we have the group as being U18 or U20. These could easily just be different teams. For example, could be a, a major league or a, a professional team and a minor league club. And that's all I got for the data set. But what I want to do here also is I want to do the first thing that you should pretty much always do if you have data like this and you're going to perform in table calculations and later visualize the information, at least in my opinion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and click A. And all that's going to do is it's going to highlight my entire data set. 
You could easily do it another way, where maybe you select whatever the bottom, bottom right corner is, you scroll to the left, and you scroll up all the way to the top, and you hold down shift, and you click on the top left corner. Either way will work, or you can highlight them manually. I'm going to go to insert, table. So we're putting all this information into a table, which will automatically update if we add information beneath. And I click OK. And now, in the table design, we see something called table 2 for the table name. I'm going to name this TBL underscore data. And click Enter. All I did is I gave this table a name now, so that when I'm using calculations, that's the table name that I refer to if I want information in this table. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the profile and I'm going to click on, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, click on a cell in here, hold down control and click A for me on a PC. And I'm going to go to insert, table, and yes, my table does have headers just like the last one, that's what these things are up top. Click OK. And again, in the table design area, I'm going to name my table, I'm going to name this TBL underscore profile. I'm going to click enter. So now I have two tables. And the last thing that I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to reduce the size of all these columns. Where I click on the first one, or maybe I click on the date one first. Oh, I want to see the date. So I click on the participation status. I go all the way down to the end of it. Hold down shift and click on the last table in the column, or the last column in the table. Right click. Go to column width, and I'm going to set it to a width that I want, which is, I don't know, maybe it's 8. I just want to make it a little bit narrower so that I can see everything. And the last thing that I'm going to do, and this is probably helpful as you investigate your data, is I'm going to click on row 1. I think it's in data, or maybe not. View. I'm going to go to view and go to freeze panes. And in this case, I'm just going to freeze the top row. And what that allows me to do is then I can scroll and always see what my headers are. I'm going to do the same thing in this profile table. Click on, you don't really have to do that, but I'm going to go freeze panes, freeze the top row, and now the same thing will happen with my profiles. In the next video, we're going to create in-table calculations in here and pull in the information that we need from the profile table to make the aggregations that we want. So I hope this video uh, was helpful and, and a good start. And one thing that I want to mention is that your information is going to be different than mine. And that's fine. So what you, what you could do is either you could create, um, put your own metrics in, metrics in at the very beginning. That might make it a little bit a little bit more difficult to follow. Or at the very end, you could replace the metrics that you have in these categories with mine. And if you have more or less, you'll want to reduce the number of columns if you have less in a given category. And you'll want to increase the number of columns to capture all the data that you have in a given category. Because what we'll ultimately do is create some scores from these categories. And that'll be important to do that. All right. Well, I'll see you in the next video.